Shalom, shalom, family. This is Yehuda uh, from Yahweh's Assembly, and today we're continuing to learn about the Messiah. Um, this is for those that are thinking about or wondering about the, their their rank in the kingdom, and this is a warning to those that cannot forgive people. This is a warning to those that hold grudges. This one's for you. Verse one. At that same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, "Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven?" That's kind of a vain question to ask, but I mean, ask and you shall receive. So they're going to receive this wisdom and knowledge. Again, this is Matthew 18. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoso, whoso shall receive one such little one little child in my name receiveth me so in order to become the greatest in the kingdom you have to be humble and it's interesting he says that you have to humble yourself as a little child because children can be humble but there's one thing about children they have uh, an undeniable faith they believe in all the possibilities so that's what he's telling you. You got to get back to that childlike faith in order to become the greatest in the kingdom. But in humbleness, you still have to be obedient also because children still have to honor thy father and thy mother in the Lord or in Yahuwah for this is right. The Hebrew name is Yahuwah. So that's twofold. It's faith and that's uh, obedience and then love or honor. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believeth in me it will be better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea because they've become, even though they're children, now they've become sons of God or daughters of God. And the Most High um, will fight for his Nahala, which his Nahala is his heritage or his inheritance, his people, those that have uh, been given the adoptions of sons and daughters of God. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe unto that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So he's saying, if there's things that are either on your body or maybe even in your mind, cut them off. If it's going to uh, bring up offenses that are going to lead you to eternal damnation. He's warning everyone. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. As you know, they said the eyes are the windows to the soul. So again, he's saying anything that's keeping you from being holy or being set apart to the most high, cut it out. Cut it out. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, one of his children. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. I have not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. His purpose was to save mankind through suffering, through obedience, and to show us the way how to become sons and daughters of God or of the Lord. But his particular mission was only to the lost sheep sheep of the house of Israel how think you if a man uh, have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go up into the mountains and seek of that one that which is gone astray because when you're his heritage or inheritance or the lot of his uh, inheritance or, or his nahala the Hebrew word then he's going to come and seek for you because you're one of his you have his name you become a son or a daughter of God and if so be that he find it verily I say unto you he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went astray even so it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish because he didn't want anybody to perish because remember he wills that we may always prosper moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother so especially with everything that's going on in the world 
a lot of our elders in, in the church or uh, in assemblies or whatever, they don't go according to protocols. They go and, you know, the next hot take. That's all it's about. Instead of uh, reaching out to the people or to the person that, you know, that they may have an ought against or maybe it's a false or they, they don't agree with the teaching or something like that. The first thing they do is they go to social media without even saying a word. But you're supposed to talk to that brother or that sister first alone. So I'm going to read that again. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So then you come with two or three witnesses. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. So the problem is we've been raised in the system to where it's all about getting the news out first instead of necessarily getting it out truthfully. Or, you know, just trying to, again, just trying to be clout chasers. We have a lot of clout chasers in the world. That's what I'm starting to notice. Well, it's not that I'm starting to notice, but you just start seeing certain people always got to be in drama. Every year there's some type of drama certain people are always in. You need to separate from people like that. Uh, I know I've been cutting off people left and right myself because every year, every uh, time I turn around, you got some other type of drama going on. Now that ain't for me. That's just what you like. You thrive on that. I thrive in peace. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church or the assembly, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. So you do, you have no dealings with them is what he's saying. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Because again, you are sons and daughters of God or of Elua. You've unlocked the Othni all or the force or the power of God or Elua. Um, you've used the keys of David. You've been given the keys to the kingdom and you've unlocked the door. So now you are masters of manifestation. Uh, through the Most High, but through your faith, through your love, and through your obedience to the Most High. Flow. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now the thing about this thing asking, you have to keep asking continually. Keep touching and agreeing. Keep that in your prayers, so the Most High will bring it to you, or He will manifest it to you faster. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This is the Messiah talking. Now again, this one is for those that continue to live in grudges. That uh, can't even forgive themselves or other people for anything. This is a warning to you. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how, oft shall, or how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Now he said his brother. He's talking about his literal people in context. Because remember at this point in time. Uh, the Messiah's uh, mission was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And they were in an occupied or a police state. Jesus said unto him. I say not unto thee. Until seven times. But until seventy times seven. So you keep forgiving your brother. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants now even with him saying that you still got to use wisdom you forgive him but that don't mean you got to be playing nobody's fool you forgiving somebody does not mean you even have to even be fellowshipping or hanging out with them no more i'll forgive you brother it's all love but uh in all honesty we got to separate this just don't work for me but you still forgave them it don't mean that you still got to keep rocking with them like that that hard you don't have to do what's best for you, your family, and in your life and your situation, your reality. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. So, this is what forgiveness 
uh, can give you, right? Or this is what mercy looks like because we got to remember that there's a way to your matters in the law. Judgment and forgiveness ties in with the mercy and faith. So we're focusing on mercy and forgiveness. But as but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee. So he cried out, asked. So let's see if he shall receive because that's the first law and manifestation you have to ask for. So he said, have patience and I will pay thee. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, that's Yahushua or Jesus, and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So then because he asked, he was forgiven of the whole debt. It was wiped clean. The whole debt was wiped clean because he asked and he humbled himself and prayed or asked him in a humble spirit. He he humbled himself as a child in that moment. And then the manifestation of the debt being forgiven was made. But the same servant went out and found one of his servants, his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. So he went from a humble and contrite heart to one that doesn't love his brother. Now, remember this: the context of this whole chapter. He's talking about don't offend the little ones. The children, because those are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Even if they owe you a debt, you're still not supposed to, definitely not supposed to put hands on nobody like that. You're going to grab them by the throat. You're going to make him pay you money after the master just forgave you of the debt completely. And his fellow, fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. So then that's what, exactly what he said. Is exactly what his fellow servant said to him. And he would not. Now remember the way to your matters are judgment. So he's failing in judgment now. Mercy. He's not showing mercy. And faith. And he would not. But went and cast him into prison. Till he should pay the debt. What do y'all think is going to happen? Because he decided to have a, a harder stone like Nabal or like Pharaoh. What do y'all think is about to happen in this man? After... His master showed compassion, forgave his debt completely. What do you think is going to happen? That's why in, in these cases, you judge not unless you be judged. So he judged to cast his man into prison. So when his fellow servants saw, that, saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. So then all the people around went and ran and told that. Then his Lord... After that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. That's what I was telling you. The first law and manifestation is ask, sure you shall receive. Because again, the most high wills that you may always prosper. He wants to give you the desires of your heart, of your mind. So since he desired to for that debt to be forgiven internally, the the most high through his son, uh, Forgave the debt externally. It was made manifest to him. Shouldest thou not shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? So should you not have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you, on thee? As his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. So he said, And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. So because he didn't show mercy. Because he didn't forgive. Uh, exactly the thing that he had wished and willed on his fellow servant was done unto him. you got to be careful. That's why you're supposed to forgive your brothers and sisters. Uh, you're supposed to forgive those who labor among you. Again, that does not mean that you have to rock with them that hard. You ain't got to kick it with them every day. You ain't got to talk to them every day. But you have to forgive unless you be not forgiven also. So likewise shall my Father, uh, my Heavenly Father, do also unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Unforgiveness is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death. And that's what prison and the grave is, it's death. Forgive those so that you can be forgiven. That's what the quote-unquote Lord's Prayer is. 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. He's trying to get you to understand that this is, a, this is a law of manifestation. Forgiveness is a law of manifestation. So I guess there's two F's, faith and forgiveness. So Father, we thank you for your word, which is Lord forever. Um, thank you for your mercy, and Father, uh, covering our lives. Father, thank you for all your ways, being mercy and truth. We ask for you to forgive us of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. We ask for you to send prosperity now. We ask for you to encamp angels round about us to protect us and keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Lest we dash our feet against stones, Father. Uh, thank you for sending your son to die for the sins of the world and for being faithful unto death to show us the way to allow us uh, a chance at the adoption to become sons and daughters of God or of the Lord. And we ask for you to send prosperity now. We ask for you to send your healing power throughout the world, Father. And again, thank you for your mercy and truth, Father. And we ask for you to protect us in these times that are coming, Father. Uh, be you who you are to us. Be our supplier, Father, in all our times that are coming, Father. All these things we do ask and pray in the name of Yahuwah, Bahashem, Yahusha, Hamashiach, Amen. So again, today we were continuing to learn about the Messiah. This was Matthew 18. I am Yehuda. This is Yah's assembly. So please subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and share our content. Until next time, peace, family. Whoa.